Hello and welcome to the Publicly Challenged Podcast. I'm your host, Luke Oswald, and I hope you join me on my quest for knowledge to become a better public land hunter, angler, and forager. Stick with this and who knows, maybe we will learn something together. All right, real quick before we get started on the show, I'm just going to talk about Treeline Academy. You've heard me say it. I can't even tell you how many times. Uh, Mark Livesey is treelineacademy.net. That's treelineacademy.net. Sign up. Use the promo code PC2020. Save yourself 20 bucks. Can't say it enough. It's awesome. Amazing. Most comprehensive e-scouting course out there. Check it out for yourself. Sign up. Use promo code PC2020. And now let's get to the show. Okay, so I'm sitting here and I am talking to Sam Swatalski. And uh, Sam, would you like to go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit? Yeah, so uh, I'm Sam Sotolsky. I own the Amsteel guy, and I've been doing that for about two years now. Um, selling a lot of daisy chains, aiders, stuff for your mobile hunting needs to make your sticks all that much lighter and get all that all that much higher. So um, I got to say, like, I don't really care about the weight thing. It's never really bothered me. I mean, to a certain point, right? But I'm always looking for things that make things easier. I'm always looking for things that make it simpler to do in the dark. Um, and, and I think it's pretty cool. I've seen some of your videos. Um, I, don't, I don't know if they were actually YouTube videos or it was on Instagram or something on Reels. I don't remember where I've seen. I've seen a couple of them now. And so finally, I was like, man, I got to get this guy on and talk to him and kind of see. Because I think it's really cool what you're doing. And I, I, I kind of want to know more about it. How did you get into that? And how, other than just, yes, I wanted to make things lighter and make it more adaptable and custom. Like, where, where did it come from? So when it first started, I got my first saddle in 2019. I got the original like, trophy line ambush saddle that weighed a ton and was uncomfortable, heavy. And I bought 100 feet of amp steel and I made four days of chains. And I'm like, man, this, is, this isn't that bad. I could, I could make these and sell these. So I started selling them off my Facebook page and getting bigger and bigger. And then, uh, eventually I just, um, started expanding my products and I'm up to about 26 products right now. And I got a couple more I'm thinking about releasing. And the big thing for me was like, like you said, trying to keep it simple. You're not worried about weight, but something that I came up with in the last month is the USA, the ultimate stick attachment. I wanted to get rid of the cons where like a daisy chain, you have to get the right loop or a rope mod. You have to tie knots. The USA is basically a, a tether made out of am steel and you just slide that proof stick and get it tight to the tree and that's something i kind of wanted to get towards and lean towards instead of having all those cons with like daisy chains yeah they weigh under an ounce but you're limited to the trees because you have to have the right loop or you have to do the trucker's hitch and really i wanted something that was safer and more reliable and that's what i came up with with the usa i was at a saddle show in ohio that uh field by the outdoors was running and I saw this, he was actually using an old bucks tether to hang a stand up. And I saw it and my dad works for me and uh, <laughs> we call him the, the am steel dad. And he was sitting there working, making am steel for me while I was talking to people. I said, Hey, can you make this up for me? And I had to make it up and threw it on a stick. And I showed Dan at Eastern Woods Outdoors and we're like, this could be big. And that's kind of where it's led me is with the USA and the USA XL trying to get those out and have people use those. So when you say Dan, you mean Dan O like the legend in the, yeah, Dan uh, from Eastern Woods in Outdoors. the saddle and hunting, uh, whole realm, the whole realm of saddle hunting. Dano is like the premier DIY parts guy for anybody who doesn't yeah, and, know who and, it is pretty much. Yeah. And the funny, the funny thing about Dan is me and him kind of played cat and mouse for probably over a year about me selling stuff on his website where I was like turning him down. I was like, you know, I'm busy with my with my full-time job i don't really think i could handle this and then eventually kind of talked me into it and now here we are that's almost that's pretty much the only platform i sell and i sell a custom a couple custom products on my etsy page but 99 percent of the stuff i sell is just on with him and it's been a big i think it's a big uh plus for people when you can stop and get like an all-in-one stop you can get your set you can get your sticks you can get your ring of steps i mean really the only thing you can't get is your saddle there you can right. get your am steel, your ropes, everything. So, um, 
Are you, are you like drop shipping them then? So it pretty much the order comes in and then you're, you're drop shipping them for everybody. Yeah. So like he'll send me the orders. So like we have, he hasn't linked up where I'll get the order come into my end and then I'll just ship it directly to the customer. No, that's cool. All right. So before we get into like all your products and kind of break them down, let's kind of talk about your, your previous history, deer hunting, how you got into it, you know, how long you've been doing it. Um, what kind of led you that direction made you so passionate about it? All those kinds of things. I've always been into hunting, like my grandpa, my dad, they've always hunted. Um, what really got me into like the mobile hunting was, uh, right out of high school, just trying to get more out of like, just going and sitting in the ladder stand, trying to expand it. I I had a lot of problems in Michigan with like running to other hunters and I'd have my ladder stand set up and someone would be like a hundred yards away. So I wanted to come up, I wanted to get more mobile and try to get that extra half a mile or extra mile back where I wasn't going to see anybody. And that's kind of what made me get into hunting more than just going and sitting on the edge of the field in a ladder stand with a shotgun or whatever that is. So the last like three or four years, I've been big into bow hunting and doing uh, a lot of public land more so the last year. I still do quite a bit of private. I got a couple of spots I hunt private, but I just want to try to push myself to be better and challenge myself a little bit more than the average person here in Michigan. Michigan, it's just whatever you can kill, you kill. Yeah. Hey man, there's nothing wrong with being an okay hunter, right? Um, That's right. You know, don't, don't, the, the biggest thing I've learned is don't ever worry about or try and compare yourself to somebody else. Whatever makes you happy and you're doing it and you're getting out there. Yeah. Kudos to you and more sure. respect. I, I don't, I don't get into that whole game of, you know, judging or whatever. I don't have a single deer that I've scored mostly because I haven't really thought they were like worthy of trying to get an actual, uh, you know, a Pope and young score or anything like that, or a Boone and Crockett score. So I've never done that, but, um, it's not saying it's a certain point in my career to where I get to a certain point and I'm like, okay, maybe this one needs to be scored or something like that. Exactly. I'll do that. But, um, it, it doesn't bother me one bit. Um, but I got to ask you then, so, um, you've been hunting and doing all that and kind of got that stuff. What was kind of some of the gear stuff that you ran through? And I mean, are you kind of a guy where you're always constantly fiddling with your gear and changing things up or are you kind of just like get it and run it? I have my set gear that I I've been using the last couple of years, but I keep adding to it with like the am steel aspect. I need to have all of the stuff to come up with new stuff. So like, the last two years, I ran the Loma of Custom Gear Doubles. Those are my go-to sticks. I run two to three of them. And then I'll run a ring of steps or an ambush platform, depending on which saddle I'm sitting in. And then um, I like the tethered one sticks. I have my issues with them. The pins I don't really like, but those, those are solid sticks for the weight. I've been playing around with the B sticks. It's just all getting, like, the packability. I like the system that Lone Wolf has. Um, it's just kind of figuring out what you like. And I kind of am prejudiced to the one with custom gear doubles. They're the first real quality set of sticks I bought. Yep. And I've, I've liked them since, but I have plenty of other sticks that I would run in a heartbeat too. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm looking to definitely get rid of my, uh, my Hawks this year and get something else. Um, when, when they first came out, it was kind of cool because you didn't need any of the stuff that Austin over at Genesis made to try and clip them all together. They all had the suction cups or whatever the heck those things are on them. But the more I use them, the more I hate yep. them, especially when you can hear them popping apart in the morning when you're pulling them apart. And I just, I really don't like the clanking, all the metal that's on there. And I know you can silence them and do all that kind of stuff, but there's a lot of other cool products out there that are made in America. And it's got me excited to kind of yeah, branch that's another out. Thing I really like. I really like about the Lone Wolf stuff. It's uh, made locally here in, in Michigan by me. I, I know one of the guys that used to work for Lone Wolf, and that kind of swayed my decision a little bit. They were made about an hour from me, so I like that aspect. And I got to put my hands on them. I'm like, I need a set of these, and that's what I've been running lately. So are you on the Lone Wolf team? You can go ahead and say it if you, if you are. No, <laughs> Shame, I'm shameless, I don't kill just, big gear for that. Just a shame, I, shameless plug or what? <laughs> I, I'm not brand prejudice or anything i just run what i think is the best gear out there and that's no, what fits me the best it's I, definitely good if it was a different set of sticks i'd run those i just saw that the the xop came out with the the whole new stand setup with the you know the mobile platform and the saddle yep. and all that stuff it looks pretty interesting too yeah I, I bought a set of those um 
they stack nice and there's a bunch of pluses to them. They're a little bit heavier, but they're, it's a good set for the money. And that's one big thing I want to try to do is I don't shoot a lot of big deer, but I like to, I want to show somebody that you don't need the most expensive gear out there to shoot a nice deer. So I have that. And my goal this year is to get a nice deer on video with those and just show them that, you know, you yeah. can buy a budget set without having to go spend a thousand dollars. The one thing I don't like about the XOPs and sorry, Cody, not that you'll probably ever hear this, but, um, the single, how it flips back and forth. I just, I, it's cool that you can adjust it like that, but I don't like a single step. I'm a huge fan of the double steps. So yeah, was... I bought the doubles and the singles, and I like the doubles a lot. They're good for the money. I mean, they're like two pounds each stick. I'm not like I'm big into weight savings. Just like I guess that's kind of the point of the. Because you're a saddle steel, hunter. Get rid of that's the straps. <laughs> so, um, but like one stick weighs two point two pounds, and I think the platform was at like five point six. So it wasn't terrible, but yeah, there's there's other stuff out there that's a little bit less in weight. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so I got to ask you what, um, like what was your first product that you came out with then? Was it just the regular Daisy chain? Yep. They, I started off with Daisy chains in one size. So I started off with six and a half foot Daisy chains, all two and a half inch loops for whatever sticks you had. And then I expanded out to four different Daisy chains. So I had six and a half foot, um, Daisy chains with two different size loops and I had eight foot Daisy chains with two, inch, two different size loops. So that's kind of where I started off and then I've expanded to aiders rope mods um gear hangers i have a gear hanging strap kind of similar to the hys that tethered offers just out of am steel so when you say aider you're talking like aider that hangs on the bottom of your stick to give you an extra step in between sticks yep okay. so i have like single double triple steps you can customize them however you want whatever step distance you want so when when you make these do they have something that like has a stiffener built in them or something like that so your boot can actually get in there without like tightening down on the loop they have rubber hosing on them so that way you can get your boot in there nice it's like i think it's eight inch piece of rubber hosing i put mm -hmm. in between there and then it gives you plenty of room to step in and get your foot in okay and and then so after you did the gate or the aiders what did you do next uh, I went into like rope mods, um, full berry rope mod. I was big into that last year. And that's kind of what led me into the, my newer products that I've come out with this year. Um, I got the eight, my version of the HYS, which is an AM steel one. So it's got a black main line and it's got orange loops that you can put your gear on. So like your binos, your bow, stuff like that. So like backpack. a gear, you made a gear hanger, like yep. essentially like a rope. Oh, okay. Um, and then you said something else, rope mods. What did you mean by that? I'm not sure if I understand. The, it's a quarter inch with one loop on the end. You put it over your Versa button. You'll wrap it around your stick. Okay. And then you'll go underneath the Versa button. You'll tie a half hitch on it. And that it's just a different way to hang your sticks. Uh, similar to like a daisy chain, just doesn't have the loops. So you can just do a half hitch and that's enough to cinch it down? Is yep. that because the AM steel cinches down so tight upon itself? Yeah, so like when you wrap the quarter inch am steel, that's a pretty like rigid am steel. Um, its weight rating is like seventeen hundred breaking or uh, breaking strength or working load, whatever you want to call it. And you, uh, when you go underneath the versa button, you'll wrap it around, and then you do two half hitches, and it's not going to go anywhere. How hard is it to take that out, like in the dark or whatever? Is it kind of a pain in the butt to t try and take out the half hitches? If you leave a loop, like the tag end hanging out of your half hitch, you can just pop that off real quick and it, it doesn't take too long. Um, a good guy to watch for those videos is Spencer Valeri. He uh, has the saddle hunting YouTube page. He goes through all of the attachment methods, like a whoopee swing, daisy chain, rope mods, all of that USA, the new USA I have that I just released. He'll go through all of those and list out the pros, the cons, how to work them, all that good stuff. Okay. That's good to know. What's his name again? Spencer Valeri. He's out of Michigan. He owns, he, uh, his YouTube page is saddle hunting. If you just search saddle hunting on YouTube, his page will pop up right on the top. Okay. All right. No, I said it probably wouldn't be Greg anymore because he's busy with the whole, the whole tethered thing now that, uh, G oh, yeah. Ted, G2 probably Ted. doesn't pop up as much. No, Tethered's a great company. They got a lot of great things. Just, um, I don't want to get into a lot of <laughs> stuff, but you, you know how it is. 
I'm, I was just saying, I'm not, I'm not biased no, or like you said, you know, uh, to Greg's one company or not. The original guys that got me into saddle hunting uh, in like 2019, when I really got big into it and bought my first trophy line, his videos were very inspirational to get informative for sure. I know that yes, 100%. I've, I've watched quite a few of his videos on how to tie a certain knot or do a certain thing, or even use a fid, um, and try and, you know, do different stuff with Amsteel. I've, I've, actually saved and downloaded a couple of his videos on youtube for sure yep um, i wish he'd get more into it and uh show some more videos so there's a lot of good things out there to learn he's a very knowledgeable man so yeah maybe he'll hear this and maybe he'll make some more videos <laughs> maybe maybe greg will make some more videos um <laughs> but so you you uh did you ever play around with like the whoopee sling and sell that type of stuff or or was that not like I on do- the table I do have some whoopee slings. Um, it's a very finicky product. It's, it takes a lot of practice. That's the big thing I want to like preach to people when they buy am steel. It's not something you can just go out in the woods. Like when you have a ratchet strap on a stick or a cam strap, you want to make sure you practice. Cause, uh, not saying that you will get hurt, but it's always better to know your gear. Like there's a couple people that you see on the saddling pages who have kickouts and stuff. That's simply from people just not practicing. And if you practice, it's one of the safest method, methods out there. But still, what's going to get you tight to the tree is a cam strap. That doesn't take any practice to go throw a cam strap on a tree. But it so, is noisy. <laughs> it is. You That's know? like one cam strap usually weighs like five to six ounces. And a daisy chain weighs 0. 0.7. My USA weighs 2.4. It just, yeah, it's big weight savings and, and no metal. That's the big thing I like getting out of is the no metal aspect. So that is one thing that I'm trying to eliminate as much as possible this year is, is the metal. I just, I'm sick of things clanging or banging or, you know, all that kind of stuff. But so I have had a kick out, scared the ever living crap out of me. Thank God. I only got scraped up a little bit and it was like, I, I climbed, I think that day I climbed with four sticks and it was like my third stick. And so, because I used four sticks, I didn't use an eight or anything, and they were pretty closely spaced together. <clears throat> but I stepped on the top step of that stick, and it shifted. I took my one foot off, and it shifted and kicked out and slid down. And I definitely that day learned the value of a lineman's belt because it actually grabbed, and even though I had it a little bit too loose, it still grabbed the tree, and I just slid down right on the trunk of the tree to the next step. And thank God it was, like I said, it wasn't far apart because I came down fast and hard and that other stick stopped me. And I can imagine I could have even probably broke an ankle or, or something if I would have came down further on that. But it it and worked out. That was that was with the cam strap too, wasn't it? No, it was not with the cam strap. It was with the daisy chain. Um, the problem with oh. the daisy chain was is I couldn't get as tight of a loop as I wanted to. Right. And so I went with the next one and then just pulled it down and set it. And that's it had enough to shift. Yeah, that's the common thing with daisy chains. I, like I saw a lot of them, but that's what I try to that's what I was trying to come up with with the new USA system that I keep talking about. And uh trying to link people towards that because I guarantee you aren't gonna have a kick out with the USA. So So we might as well just go into that. I know we're, we're, we're going to work up to that, but let's just go into the USA because it's pretty cool. I, I, I like the video. I into it. And, um, and, and I think it's pretty cool that not only can you use it on a climbing stick, but you can use it on a platform as well. And I've seen you install it in your videos, and when you put it on, you almost have to leave it a little bit loose. Otherwise, you won't be able to cam down. It gets so tight that you can't even cam down your platform and, and pull that platform down. So let's like start from the whole beginning on the USA and just tell every little detail about it. Cause it's pretty cool. Um, basically the USA, I was at an Ohio mobile show and I saw a stand with someone actually using their tether and it was Oplux tether. He had it on there and I didn't actually know who it was at the time, but I just said, you know, Hey dad, can you make this for me? You made it up and I showed it. Dan loved it. I loved it. I went home and I tested it. I was about eight hours away. I couldn't wait to get home and test that thing out. <laughs> they only had these little tiny pulls. I couldn't really test it at that show. So I got home and I, I put it the test, messaged a couple of my buddies, had them come over, test it out. And they're like, you know, this is going to be huge. Um, so basically what I did was I took a one-eighth inch am steel and I full buried it. So I put it 
all I pull all the way back through itself to give it like the rigidness because amp steel is a hollow core rope. Yep. So I pull it all the way back through to give it the rigidness, and then the conti- the prusik I make it's a continuous loop. So I take that amp steel, I splice all the way back through itself and make a continuous loop to form the prusik. And the big thing that makes that work is also having the full berry on the continuous loop portion. So everything's a full berry in there. So it's a very time consuming process, but um basically that is what makes it all work so i have that in an eight foot section and you just wrap that around the tree pull that prusik tight and you're good to go so do you connect so when you do it you got a loop on on one end of of your 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 leader or your uh piece that goes around the tree right and you connect yep. that to your your versa button or whatever it is on your stick so you connect yep. the loop and then you take it around and you got a tag end that's free, but it has a Prusik on it, and you connect the the loop of the Prusik to your Versa button also, and then pull it tight, right? Yep, you just slide the Prusik till it's tight. So basically, it's like a small tether yeah. or a small line yeah. belt with the Prusik. So what I figured when I saw this is if you trust your life with it when you're in a saddle, why not trust your stick with it? Yeah. So I did a lot of testing with like Ditzel hitches or however you want to say it just because a lot of people like how those slide a little bit easier, but I found that like sideways pressure wouldn't hold very well. So I came up with this and, and all my, my mat in my head, I have all these numbers and to get all the measurements for everything. And it just worked out and I got all, I got it all lined up. Right. And it's a system that works really well. I, I had to actually put the sales on hold for a little bit because people were buying them so much. I couldn't keep up. So, yeah, no, I saw it. And when I saw it, I was like, I need to, I need to get this guy on. I need to talk to him because it's pretty cool. That was the first video I saw, and then I dug further into your stuff and kind of started watching. It, and I'm like, okay, I like what this guy's doing. I need to figure out more. It seems pretty cool. Um, I I think that's awesome that that you did that and you've got that because truly, I mean, it's a simple setup and it's safer than like in the dark. Once again, if you're not a guy like. I like to try and let my eyes adjust and just do it all in the dark if I can without a headlight bumping all around the place, you know, and just trying to, I I don't, probably doesn't scare game or whatever, but it's like, if you can do it without a headlamp, why not? And the fact that now you're, you're not tying any knots, the the whole knot thing is gone, especially if like, you're not a knot tying guy, this is perfect for you. It it truly is. It's, It's a perfect way to do it. Um, and I mean, a Prusik is so simple and it puts so much tension on something. It's it's pretty cool. But so I got to ask you, how hard is it? Do you have to work the Prusik real hard in order to get it to come loose? Or or how can you go about that? Or did you just try and like cam your stick up a little bit and push it up to loosen up that? To get it off, um, the easiest way is to just push that stick up just a little bit and take it off. And then you kind of have to, there's a couple videos, but like massage it or work the knot kind of like how the Tethered Phantom uh utila bridge or whatever they call it you have to massage that to kind of get it to work out that's the only con i really found but my big thing was if that's the only con you can take your stick off and put it on the ground and work it on the ground and get it off and then you don't have to worry about anything while you're up in the tree where you're have a risk of falling or getting hurt so because right. the that... big thing that made me come up with this design was the video that spencer said that i already talked about earlier where he had had the pros and cons there were a lot of cons and i wanted to come up with something that had less cons and was still safe and then the psh the vital ground outdoors release that put a big fire under my butt just saying like i've been selling daisy chains aiders rope mods and all this for two years and i haven't come out with anything groundbreaking i need something that's gonna push me to the next level and that's kind of what inspired that just all those things combined and then the support from my family to leave my job and start doing ham steel full time. And it was just like, it's time. And then I released this and it's been nothing but great. The only thing I can say is I don't know how it's going to work in the dark. I haven't, I didn't use it all last hunting season. I just came out with it two months ago and it'll be interesting <laughs> to see what people think in the dark. You better get I your mean, butt out there tonight. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. You need to get but, out there uh, tonight. I'm so busy. I, I I don't got I don't have much time between <laughs> making all these to go out and play with it after I design them. I have my people that go out and test them, and they say it's great, but but we'll see. Yeah, no, that's something. Uh, I'll let you know because I'm I'm definitely ordering some. Um, it 
it's something I think is pretty cool. I do think, and I don't know because I haven't played with it, but I plan on trying to. But I honestly think if you and, – and tell me if I'm wrong because you have played with it. But is there a point where you can adjust it too tight without actually like – you know, torquing down on the stick and getting it to bite on the tree, because I can imagine in my head that you can actually get it tight enough without even, you know, pushing the stick down and getting it to bite that it would stay on its own. And that might make it difficult if somebody did that to where it would make it difficult to get it off the tree. I haven't found that, that there's a couple different videos out there on people attaching them and people playing with them. Um, Michigan Ambush Outdoors has kind of a crossover on how they attach it. They've done three different methods that he showed me and uh he was one of the first people to order them he ordered them before i even put pictures out there or said what it was i dan was up in the up and he had to approve the post because uh he owns the website so he had to approve the post a couple of days before it actually released so there was a there's no description it just said usa ultimate stick attachment and uh it was on eastern woods outdoors two days before i actually released any pictures or any videos of it and he bought <laughs> some so when i got to shipping them he was playing with them and he did kind of a crossover where instead of putting the Prusik on right away, he would wrap it almost like the rope mod underneath the Versa button and go back around the tree. So it had like a double action around the tree. And then he put the Prusik on the other side. Hmm. I don't know if that makes sense in just talking or whatnot without showing you, but he got that so tight that I imagine it would be kind of hard to get that off the tree because yeah. that was, yeah, no, that's, it was something else watching him do it and watching how tight that got to the tree. Yeah. So have you ever found like, have you ever played with the, the am seal and gotten it to a point where it's like probably not safe? Like you use too small of a diameter or something like that. Any, any am steel or the USA? I don't, not on the USA, just in general, like am steel. I, I've had one kick out happen and it was the scariest, like you were talking about, it's one of the scariest things you ever have ever happens in your life. And I always, test products have people test them before i release them i wanted to so like my my rope mod i sell now is a quarter inch i'm like well i'm going to sell a one eighth inch rope mod so i put it out to the test i took out hunting one time climbed up in the tree and i was climbing down and that stick kicked out so fast i was like oh <laughs> this ain't for me i i it got the knot because uh am seals hollow it got so tight that it like it almost burnt yes because all the tension and i had to cut the stick or cut the rope off to get my stick down that's from that's the kick out. one of the things there's a couple things that like i've learned that am steel has drawbacks one of them being that two being if the am steel gets worn like normally on a piece of rope you've got the sheathing on the rope and the sheathing mm-hmm. will get worn and you still got your fibers on the inside you've got your core rope if am steel gets worn it's time to replace it. There is no, yeah. because itself is the actual rope itself. So like, yeah, that, that's one thing. So have you ever found or like started to realize there is a certain point to where you need to, uh, need to replace things? I, I haven't had anyone that's bought Amsteel from me message me with a failure. I've had two people message me that when they were opening their package, they cut the am steel and asked for an exchange, which is no problem. But I haven't had anyone with an actual failure where like a loop on a daisy chain broke or the rope got cut or the rope frayed and ripped or whatever. Yeah. Um, I, I build my stuff a little bit differently. Like my daisy chains are built differently than anybody else besides Matt from Vital Ground Outdoors built his. Uh, instead of just folding them in half and then a lot of people just do the daisy chains the whole way. I have berries on each end, so that way, one end has one loop, and then the and then about a foot and a half later, all the other loops start. So that because you're never going to be hunting a tree that's four inches, six inches in diameter. So that way, nothing's going to come undone. There's no worry about anything. You can use all the loops. So I I wouldn't say like minus that scare with the the rope mod that <laughs> I tried playing with. Um, I don't sell things I don't believe in. Like a lot of people have movable aiders made out of am steel i don't feel safe in a movable aider so i don't sell movable aiders i'll like if someone asks me i'll point them in a different direction which yeah i'm turning away business but if i don't believe in it i can't sell it explain you know? can, before we get too far away from it can you explain a movable aider because i'm not sure i even understand it for sure are you talking like an aider for like an ascension aider or like to where someone is you know climbing a rope or something like that or are you talking like an aider that you just hang on your stick 
know, like how you'd have an aider on a hockey lane, you'd attach to both the steps on the side of the stick on the bottom. Okay. So like if you had like a lone wolf original stick where it only had the, like the swivel steps or the actual piece that have the swivel steps, it's hard to find somewhere to connect an am steel, like two sides of an am steel point. So they'll have one point that meets up in the middle, almost like a triangle. Okay. And it'll have a loop and you can hook it to your versa button or your step. And then as you climb, you only need one aider. So instead of running three or four aiders for three sticks, you run one aider and you move it up as you climb. Okay. And so what is when you say movable, you just mean like one you could take off and keep hanging in different spots? Yeah. So like a lot of them will have a way to attach to your foot. Like they'll put a castration band or uh, like those slide locks for backpacks that you can cinch on the elastic. And they'll put those on the end so you can cinch it to your boot. And then it'll have a loop it hangs and you hook it onto your bursa button or your stick i don't around your stick i don't feel like i like that idea <laughs> I, the... I don't personally like i know a lot of people like it um a lot of people really like the aspect of being like that much lighter but i'm six foot four and i don't like moving stuff with me when i climb up the tree i like having my stuff stay there and i know it's gonna work stay there all year yeah I, it, to me it seems like that would be just one more aspect of like getting hung up on something yeah. having especially when you attach it to your foot like i want to be able to remove my foot from whatever it is in case i get caught up in it that i can get right. out of it i can't picture in my head taking a castration band like you mentioned and and attaching it to my foot to where you can't pull out of it and then you get hung up or caught and say for some reason your lineman belt slipped now you're upside down hanging by your foot or something to me that just seems crazy but I, I mean, yeah. I guess there's all kinds of different people doing different things out there for sure, but that's not there's something. There's a lot of people that are going lighter and lighter and trying different things, and it's it's one thing that I've tested out a couple different ones, and I'm just like, you know, this isn't for me, and if I don't like it, I can't sell it. So. Yeah. No, uh, hey, man, I get that for sure. And that's like people go lighter and lighter when it comes to first aid. I mean, and what's crazy is like whitetail hunters are probably the worst, and I thought maybe western hunters were but at least they carry like aspirin and other things like that in a couple band-aids and maybe some duct tape or whatever. But whitetail hunters, most of them don't have anything in their pack that has to deal with first aid. And the truth of the matter is the majority of hunting injuries are actually tree stand injuries. So right. falling out of a tree stand, breaking your arm. And, and to me, all these falls are getting hung up or whatever. It just makes me think like, Oh my gosh, there's so many things that could go wrong. You could get a bone that actually hits and severs an artery or something like that. And it's like, last year was the first year I started carrying a tourniquet in my pack. Mm -hmm. And I had it on my hip belt, so it was always right there and fast to access. And then, of course, you take more training and you realize that you might even want it somewhere quicker than that. Because you only got 30 seconds to put that freaking thing on, on an arterial bleed before you end up actually lo potentially losing consciousness and not able to even help yourself anymore. Then there's no self-rescue if you can't get that thing on and stop the bleed. So that, like, to me, all of a sudden now, like, a hunter, every hunter should have a tourniquet and have it easily accessible. And maybe even two tourniquets because it's easier to put a rat's tourniquet on your buddy, but if you're trying to put a rat's tourniquet on your arm, it might not be the quickest and easiest thing. One with a windlass might be. But... These are all things that just now it always pops in my head. And the fact that like we're talking about it right now about just going lightweight and lighter and lighter and lighter, right? That means more things you're ditching. It's more things you're ditching out of your pack. And it's like, okay, fine. You're going lightweight somewhere else. Carry an entire IFAC. Get an improvised first aid kit and, and carry yeah. that. Like make that your heavy thing. But the cool part is, is I started thinking about it. Your saddles, most of them got all these loops and stuff. You could have the IFAC right there on your belt, on your saddle, or wherever. Exactly. And that's something that, like, I don't think you can preach it enough. Like, first aid is paramount, but not only that, take a class. Take something, some type of TCC class or something like that to where you can um, you can learn how to preserve life until you can get the proper medical care. So I just wanted to, like... Get that PSA out there. I know it's kind of off topic, but it's something that... And to touch base on that, I have law enforcement background. I just did four years in law enforcement, and I uh, resigned recently to do this. And I am certified in CPR, and I have a, I had a tourniquet I carried to work. 
and I have a tourniquet I carry when I hunt as well. Yes. So it's, I don't have a big first aid kit. I carry like big bandages. I don't carry anything super small, but big bandages to cover big wounds. I figure if it's small enough where I need a small band aid, I can just walk out and fix it. Correct. But if I need something big, you you want to have your tourniquet. You want to have chest seals. Whatever you need. It could be. <laughs> yeah. You could use am seal as a tourniquet if you have to, but you want to have you want to be prepared for the worst. Like yeah, we're going lighter and lighter and lighter, but like you said, the lighter you go, the more there is for risk. And why not add a little bit more weight and carry a tourniquet, carry some first aid, carry something in case something happens and always stay tethered to the tree always stay connected to this tree and i mean let's be realistic though when we're talking weight here if you get like uh a north american rescue cat whatever they're up to cat seven now those things what do you think they weigh i mean the the windlass is plastic the buckle is plastic and then it's literally a freaking nylon webbing velcro strap it probably weighs six maybe seven ounces if that i mean it's still pretty lightweight. And then you could, I mean, a lightweight tourniquet holder and have that on your saddle if you walk in with your saddle or have it on your belt or, or on, you know, your 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 shoulder strap or your pack, wherever it's accessible. I mean. And <laughs> there's so much room on your saddle to put stuff. Like, go yeah. to Eastern Woods Outdoors, buy a flea saddle pouch for putting stuff in and just put a small first aid kit right in your back, right on your side so where you can access it. Yeah. It's a good point to bring up because safety is a big thing. And and it's always smart to carry at least something that you feel comfortable with this, that might save your life if you need it. Without a doubt. And that's the other thing, like how much, you know, um, like quick clock gauze. If you carried like two packs of quick clock gauze, enough to pack a wound, because let's face it, right? What do we do? Not only do we have falls, but we have sharp pointy sticks that most of us are hunting with or a firearm. And it's designed to either cut flesh or blow a hole through flesh. and it can happen and you see it. And I always bring up the one thing with Dave Brinker to where one of these days I'm gonna have to get him on here and talk about this, but to where an arrow dropped out of his quiver and he stepped right into it and it went through his calf, but it could have been really bad cut an artery, something like that and, and been way worse of a situation than it was. Luckily they had a makeshift first aid kit that they made something with and got him out. But I could only imagine you know, say that happens to your, to your abdomen where you're not packing a wound or, you know, but if it's an extremity, you're going to pack it. And if it's something that's your core, you need to have a chest seal and, and put that on there so it can actually vent itself and still, you know, prevent you from sucking in more air, things like right. that. And I mean, what's a chest seal way? You can get two hyphen vent chest seals for like, I mean, those probably heavier than a tourniquet, but not much. It's right. Yeah. And the big thing is like a lot of the, you got your public hunter. So like public hunting, you should be carrying like a fire starting system. So you never know what might happen. Like it would be nothing to carry a little tin with some char cloth in it or a lighter. And you never yeah. know, like if you're on private land, okay, just take a small first aid kit with some band-aids or whatever. But if you're going back into the public land, you're going a mile, two miles back. You got to be prepared. You never know what might happen. If you break your leg and you're stuck out there. You want to make <laughs> right. sure that you can start a fire. And not only that, a space blanket. A mylar blanket yeah, is huge take up any space anymore and it can take and it's enough to keep you keep enough warmth in where you might not get hypothermic if you got to be out there all yep. night for whatever reason but way off topic awesome topic to have though for sure because i mean safety safety is number one you want to you know all of us got families friends somebody we're coming home to or or something like that and it's it's something we need to probably bring into the light more than we do. So I just figured when we were on the topic of that, it made sense to kind of, kind of drop in. And I appreciate your input on I, that too. I agree. And and maybe Dan will hear this and they'll be coming out with something that might be a lightweight gear for saddle hunters to take out in the woods for the first <laughs> aid. You never know. Yeah, no, I like that. Um, maybe, maybe that's where I come in then. I can... <laughs> it, might be. it might be where I come in a, a saddle hunters IFAC, but, um, not only that, I think, I think training, um, while we're just here and we're talking about it real quick is take, take a course, you know, watch some North American rescue videos at the very least, even though it's not instruction to where you get feedback on it, but so you can have an idea to try and ha have a basis, how to diagnose, treat and, and get yourself to proper care. Because that, th I think that is more important than just having a bunch of pieces of gear and not knowing how to use them either. 
That's the same thing with uh, dam steel and all the stuff for climbing sticks and stuff like that. Know your gear, practice with it. I wish more people like Austin from Genesis 3D. He's throwing a saddle tune-up event September 25th. I'm going to it. There's a bunch of other people going to it. Right before hunting season opens up, you get to go practice with all your gear, get to meet with a bunch of cool guys. It's a great thing, and I wish that more people would do that and just get a bunch of saddle hunters together, a bunch of mobile guys together, and just go practice with your gear before season opens. That way you can feel a little bit more confident yeah. in your stuff, and you can you have other guys there in case something ever did happen or whatever. But Yeah, no, that's funny you mentioned that because I was actually just looking at that, and I messaged Austin about it because it was the first I heard of it. Um, he, he was talking on – he did a little Instagram story or something – and I, mm-hmm. I watched it and I had to message him because I was like, man, what's, when's this? What's this? I must have missed this. But uh, so August 20 or September 25th, right before yeah, hunting next, season for most of us. Next Saturday, he's got over six grand being, of stuff being given away, including four USAs and one USA XL. So some lucky guy will be walking home with a big old set of USAs. So let's let's talk about the USA a little bit more while we're on the topic and, and we're here. What what is the size and how big of a tree can it actually go around? And then you got like an XL, so that would be the next size up, I'm guessing. So the difference between the USA and the USA XL, the USA is rated for 500 pound uh, safe working load, and the XL is rated to 1700 pound safe working load. There's no different size and length or anything. Okay. The XL is just for that person. I I was gonna call it the platform version, but they both work on sticks and they both work on platforms. So. The XL is mainly just something for someone that wants that extra stability or that extra bite on the tree because 3 16 diameter amp seal is quite a bit bigger than 1 8. It doesn't sound much bigger, but it's got quite a bit more bulk to it. So um, on the 8-foot version, uh, I'd say probably like a 30-inch tree you could get around. It's it's a pretty big tree. Um, I, I personally use 6-foot. I don't like hunting very big trees, but I've never came in a situation where I needed more than 6 feet of attachment. There are a few places that I hunt that have some old growth trees in there. And I'm not going to lie, you almost have to put your stick, you know, like three and a half feet up in order to get some of your loops of your six footer around them just yeah. for that first stick. I mean, after that, it's and fine. But um, I mean, that's you- another thing that I offer, like um, the D2 aider. It's not really an aider. I, it's just name I came up with. It. It's a two foot extension and you can get it in two. It's actually two, three or four foot. And you connect it to your daisy chain, your cam strap, your USA, rope mount, whatever you want to attach it to. And it gives you that much extra length to go around the tree. Okay. But the cool part about it, why I call it the D2, is because you can attach it to your stick and hook it onto your saddle while you're climbing up the tree. And if you need it, you take it off and then attach it. So that way it gives you a way to carry it up the tree and it gives you a way to extend the strap. So how does it connect to, do you just make a loop through it? or It's how? got two loops on each end. And then it's got a main line and you just, what I do is I just wrap it around and I pull one in through the other loop. And then I hook that second loop on my saddle. I got a lot of good pictures and there's a lot of good videos on it on YouTube and uh, on Eastern Woods Outdoors that uh, show how to use it and different ways to use it. So like, I don't like having a lot of extra tag end when I'm climbing because then it dangles in the wind or whatever. So I use six foot and then I have a two foot extension on each strap or stick for when I, if i need it okay because in my head i'm kind of picturing like an am steel shackle how that works but i'm guessing so, it's not like, because it is amsteel, too loose have you seen the am steel dog bones that they sell for like um hammocks and stuff yes yes so it's ba- that's basically what it is it's just got one it's got one loop on each end and it's got it's like two feet long and you just would wrap it around your stick and then if you need to attach it you attach one end to your versa button one end to your strap or whatever attachment method you're using and it makes it that much longer nice okay no that's cool that's good to know um so i'm trying to think of how to say so do you make them longer or you only make the extension for them for your for the usa i have them in six and eight foot i've had a lot of people message me for like a 15 footer i don't know why you'd want a 15 footer but <laughs> for the amount of for like the amount i'm trying to keep it kind of like price efficient or budget efficient, I guess, yeah. where my USA is $25 for an eight foot. And for me to make anything longer than that, it'd be 
it'd be a little bit more costly. I would do it, but right now I'm just so busy. I can't really take the custom orders. Yeah, no, that's understandable. I mean, it sounds like you're really cranking them out. You know, we were talking a little bit earlier and you were talking about 16 hour days and all that kind of stuff, trying to get everybody their orders before hunting season. Yep. So hopefully it slows down enough. You can get a chance to play with your own gear, but still, still enough to where you're making enough money to make it worth it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> when I when I first opened up, I was just doing it by myself. I got a couple of people that work with me now, but when I first opened up in 2019, it was November 16th. I remember because I shot my first buck on November 15th, opening morning gun season here in Michigan. And the 16th, I made my first four daisy chains and I put them up for sale and I started making them from there. I missed six weeks of hunting season right after that because I was so busy. That sounds terrible. I don't. I, oh, I think I'd quit and go back to my regular job if I couldn't hunt anymore. <laughs> no, I, I made it work after that. The last year, I, I got out plenty, so. It's just kind of figuring out everything and trying to get everyone their gear. It's, I hate it because, you know, it's last minute and people are ordering and everyone's messing with me when they're going to get their stuff. And I, I only got so many people that work for me and trying to get everyone their stuff. It's a lot of orders. So yeah, we're doing our best. And I actually closed down the USA's for, it's been about a week now trying to get everyone's out. My shipment of uh, AM still got delayed. So we got a little bit low in stock and I had to cut everybody off for a little bit. That sucks. That sucks when you got supply issues. That's probably worse yep. than uh, worse than having you know too many orders where you can't get them out because you feel bad yeah, that, about that all was, people waiting. There was a couple of things that went into delaying the orders for a little bit, but that was a big one when my package they pretty much lost it, and it's it should be here tomorrow. So I'm hoping that we'll be able to crank some orders out this weekend and finish up all the orders. Yeah, no, that's that's something that. I've, I've, I've noticed it a lot lately with, you can blame it on whatever COVID or whatever, but a lot of things are getting messed up. So, and yep. you can't find certain things you want or whatever, but, um, so let's kind of talk about real quick, one more time where like everybody can find all your content and your products. Cause I think it's important. We talked about some cool things. I know it's hard to sometimes understand exactly what we're talking about on this. So where can they go and like find more of your videos and your content and exactly the products we're talking about. So any of my products you can find on easternwoodsoutdoors.com backslash the Amsteel guy. And a lot of the products on there, not all of them, but most of them have a link in there for a YouTube video on how to use it. And I paired up with Spencer Valerie. We've talked about him before of saddle hunting, and he's done a lot of videos on the attachment methods. He hasn't done much on the aiders portion, but the Aiders, I have videos all over on YouTube and on the Eastern Woods Outdoors page. And so saddle hunting, you can find there's two different videos, one on the USA, one on uh, the daisy chains, rope mods, whoopee slings, all that stuff. So that way you can, there should be no questions on how to use them or what you might want. It should clear up all the confusion. But also there's links in the products when you specifically click them. So if like you click a daisy chain, there'll be a video on daisy chains. If you click the rope mod, there's a video on rope mods. Nice. I like it. So um, where can everybody one more time find your products? Just I know you said it, but you kind of combine it with there. So um, you're exclusively selling from from Dano, right? Not, not exclusively. Pretty much exclusively. I sell on easternwoodsoutdoors.com backslash the steel guy. And I also have an Etsy page where I sell some other stuff, mainly the same things, but I sell it on a smaller scale. But that's uh, Etsy.com backslash the real Amsteel guy. The Someone real Amsteel. Amsteel some, somebody stole your actual the Amsteel guy, huh? That sucks. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Um, and then the um, thing, I'm trying to get more into the social media aspect. So Facebook.com backslash the Amsteel guy and Instagram.com backslash the Amsteel guy. I have a lot of good videos on there. And uh, there should be a lot more good content coming out really soon. There's a lot of new products in the works if I can never get everyone caught up and get orders out a little bit quicker no that's awesome i i appreciate you sam i appreciate you coming on and talking about the product it's something i'm definitely going to have to check out and uh for anybody listening to this podcast i highly recommend you going and checking out sam's videos and the products because they're pretty cool and when i when i saw the usa video that was the one that i saw i was just like that's freaking awesome because there's so many times where i thought about the rope mod and i'm like i just don't want to have to do that in the dark and it's not that i'm not a knot guy but some of the knots and hitches and stuff that they use it's just not that common to a lot of people and it's like wow why why didn't anybody ever think of this before so it's pretty cool that you did that it was awesome having you on and talking to you and uh thanks so much for coming on
I appreciate you having me. And once again, thank you so much for listening to the Publicly Challenged podcast. I hope you enjoyed the show. And if you did, please subscribe on whatever platform it is you're listening to. Also, if you could leave a review, that would help us out. And you can check us out on Instagram or at publiclychallenge.com. And once again, thank you so much for listening to the show. Thank you.